كيف ينبغي لنا أن نتعلم؟ متى؟ وأين؟ ومع من؟ دعونا نسأل حتى لماذا نتعلم؟ بحثاً عن الإجابات علينا أن نبدأ بطرح الأسئلة ما هو شكل العالم الذي نريده؟ ما الذي يسعنا فعله اليوم ليكون عالمنا أفضل من أجل أجيال الحاضر والمستقبل؟ تدرك اليونسكو أهمية امتلاك رؤية وبناء الحوار واتخاذ إجراءات تسمح لنا من خلال التعليم بإصلاح كوكب متضرر والعيش في سلام والاستفادة من منجزاتنا التكنولوجية على أفضل وجه عينت منظمة اليونسكو لجنة دولية واستقت ملاحظات مأخوذة من أكثر من مليون شخص لإعادة تصور الطريقة التي يمكن أن ترسم بها المعرفة والتعلم ملامح مستقبل البشرية وكوكب الأرض ويتفضل بشرح الطريقة أعضاء اللجنة ورئيستها We're all together on this planet but we do not share others' resources well or use them in a sustainable manner nor do we live well enough with one another Unacceptable inequalities exist between different regions of the world We are far from achieving gender equality for women and girls. However, education is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal. Without abandoning all that we know, we need to transform education. Classrooms and schools are essential, but they will need to be built and experienced differently in the future. Work is changing rapidly, and education will need to build skills needed in 21st century workplaces. At present, too many digital divides exist, particularly in Africa. So we must harness the great promise of the digital revolution. Over the last two years, it has been my privilege to lead UNESCO's International Commission on the Futures of Education, with inputs from over a million people who shared their hopes and fears and ideas We are pleased to now present this report, reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education. من المساهمين في التقرير قادة مفكرون من كل أصقاع العالم. Le rapport a deux principes fondateurs. Le premier concerne les droits humains et en particulier le droit à l'éducation, conçu d'une manière ample, large. de façon à embrasser la diversité, toutes les diversités qui existent dans le monde, mais aussi à embrasser l'idée d'un cycle de vie qui va dès la naissance jusqu'à l'âge adulte, avec toutes les conséquences de cette idée d'une éducation tout au long de la vie. Le deuxième principe fondateur concerne l'idée qu'il faut agir ensemble, l'idée de l'interdépendance dans le monde, Et à partir de cette idée, nous appelons à construire l'éducation comme un projet public et un bien commun, un bien commun mondial. Et c'est pourquoi l'idée de participation est tellement importante pour nous dans ce rapport. Our report, Reimagining our futures together, a new social contract for education. which is really an invitation to a broad, inclusive, democratic and participatory dialogue with each and every one of you, with every person on this planet with an interest in what educational institutions do. A dialogue designed to ask the question, how do we become more effective in preparing people so that they can fully participate civically and economically in their societies and contribute to build a more inclusive and a more sustainable world. The report brought the idea of a common. It means together. This is why in the title we use the, the, the word together. The purpose of the report is how to put humankind together in the global world. And to be together today, we need to have education. Education is the vector of progress is the vector of togetherness. I think that the most important thing about this report is that it centers the work of education around major challenges and opportunities before us in the world. So big global strategic issues like climate change, 
the fact that the fourth industrial revolution is underway, that the world is more interconnected than ever before. And using those as the basis upon which to frame our conception of what education should be as we prepare the next generation to confront these problems and to take advantage of the opportunities. لقد كانت جائحة كوفيد-19 أحدث التحديات الكبرى التي يواجهها التعليم والتي أثرت على معظم الطلاب في جميع أنحاء العالم. COVID-19 crisis has revealed vulnerabilities in modern social systems, including education. It is essential to reimagine the educational system now so that we can prepare for the next global crisis that may occur in the future and also build a more resilient society and create a sustainable future. This report is happening against a backsliding in democratic governance that we've seen all over the world. It's a backsliding in democratic governance that's also building up on a significant spread of exclusionary identity-based politics, greater inequities. They're also building up on the discontent, basically, of people who feel they've been left behind uh, by a globalized world order. They also will have a significant impact on education, both not only in terms of the curricula, uh, but also in terms of who has access to education, what kind of approaches to education we employ. يطرح التقرير توصيات حول عدد من الأبعاد المختلفة. The report tries to present this as a unified concept of education in an enlarged sense where people would acquire not just cognitive skills and have guidance in their intellectual development, but also achieve the ability for emotional empathy, sympathy for the plight of others, concern for social justice and human rights, and, extremely important, an awareness of the planet that we're living on and the other species inhabiting it, and that all of that needs to be particularly emphasized in the education of the future. Children are not like pieces of furniture mass-produced to a standard. And uh, teachers are not factory workers. We are not superheroes either. And we won't be able to build the futures of education that we envision if we remain in isolation. We need to see teaching as a creative and collaborative profession. And we need to support teachers' freedom and agency. We need to remind that as much as we value the power of technology, technology by itself will never replace schools or teachers. Technology can elevate learning, but teachers and schools are irreplaceable. We have to do our best to teach young generations to care for each other. The report calls for pedagogies of cooperation and solidarity, and this means that we should willingly embrace the idea of diversity. We need a kind of new social contract for that. Cooperation and collaboration need to become the defining characteristics of learning communities. لكل ذلك تبعات هائلة على طريقة تصميمنا للمناهج وتعاملنا مع المعرفة. Knowledge is part of our global commons. It's like water, it's like air. It's something that we all share and that we must all protect, improve and revise all the time. So that's a very basic idea, but then in the report that is more carefully elaborated, in terms of what teachers can do, researchers can do, what students can do, how can we recognize that education is not only a space in which existing knowledge is shared, but new knowledge is created. UNESCO as an organization uh, devoted to human rights regards the knowledge commons and access to it as a human right. Therefore, the authors of the report are committed to the idea that states and governments must play a vital role and not just allow the production and distribution of knowledge to fall entirely uh, into the hands of the marketplace and let the chips fall where they may. We need to work together 
Internationally, we should have a commitment to expand our resources for education, especially for those people in the South. We also need to understand the knowledge in the past in general generated from the North. But to cope in the challenges, we need to have knowledge not only from the North, but also from the South. And we need to have trilateral cooperation in our educational effort. And uh, the widening disparity between the have and have not. We should educate our students with a morality to understand the humanity has common futures. And uh, we should have the empathy to understand the needs of everyone and to support anyone. La dimensión de los derechos humanos en la educación se hace indispensable. El segundo punto para mí tiene que ver con la valoración, la inclusión y el reconocimiento de los derechos de los pueblos indígenas y de las culturas, las diversidades culturales y que esto se vea como una riqueza de la cual también los estudiantes y las nuevas generaciones se deben nutrir. Lo tercero tiene que ver mucho con la sostenibilidad del planeta. La inclusión en el sistema educativo, lo que es el impacto del cambio climático, esta forma de mirar el mundo solo depredando y pensando en una explotación de recursos naturales, nos parece que tiene que parar y la nueva generación tiene que entender que hay que cuidar el entorno, hay que cuidar el planeta y eso significa también cuidar la vida de la humanidad. يضم التقرير دعوة إلى إجراء الأبحاث وإلى التعاون الدولي والتضامن العالمي هو يفتح نقاشات ولكنه كذلك أداة يمكن أن تكون يعني أداة هامة لرسم مسارات لتغيير التربية وجعلها تربية للمستقبل يمكن لصناع القرار أن تكون لهم الأدوات من أجل إصلاح التربية والتعليم يمكن المجتمع المدني أن يستعمل هذا التقرير كذلك للقيام بحملات من أجل الدفع في اتجاه يعني تطوير مستقبل التعليم. Our commission was a commission of experts, but I think one of our conclusions was that it's not our expertise, but the expertise of future generations that we want to empower through this report. I think the recommendations that are the most important have to do with transforming education to meet the needs and challenges of our future, to meet ecological challenges, to meet the challenges of peace, and to make sure that no one is left behind. No global dialogue can meaningfully move forward without embracing local, properly inclusive and collaborative strategies. This global dialogue is no different and the starting point has to be within our own communities. We must insist that every voice is heard and represented, and we must ensure that all stakeholders across all sectors step up to the plate and work together towards realizing this common good. Only then will we be able to truly reinforce the future of education and in turn create a sustainable future for all. While we were preparing this report, the COVID-19 global health pandemic disrupted the education of children, youth, and learners of all ages. Despite the challenges, we have seen remarkable efforts from teachers, families, and students to continue to learn and grow during these difficult times. We dedicate this report to the teachers and students whose lives were disrupted by COVID, and we hope that the proposals it presents and the dialogue and action it calls for will be of help to them as we work together today to shape futures for humanity and the planet that are peaceful, equitable, and sustainable.